Hello and welcome to another Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a white, a red and green or Naya colored tokens deck featuring a Girat, a Mirror of the Wilds as our commander. There's a few ways you could pronounce it, this is what I'm sticking with. This 3 mana 3-3 three, three has haste and says non-token creatures we control, including Girat itself, can tap to create a token that's a copy of target token we control that entered the battlefield this turn. So that's a lot to parse, but basically we want to try to play some cheap non-token creatures, so often one and two drops, that can then eventually start copying tokens we play later after playing Girad. And then of course there's going to be a lot of overlap, meaning creatures that enter the battlefield generating some sort of token, so that if we draw them early they're still good enablers, but late game we can still top tag them and then start copying those tokens as well. So I've uh, split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with, of course, mana acceleration. Lots of cheap one-drops that can tap for mana, so we can play gear at early, and then later they can still tap to start copying other tokens, so those are great. And then, of course, anything that makes treasure tokens is also going to be quite valuable in a deck like this. And then we move on to our other token makers. We've got some cheap ones and then some more expensive ones. And these will range from making 1-1 one, one tokens to 3-3 three, three golem tokens to even some 3-4 or 4-4 four, four flying tokens. So those are some of our payoffs. And then we've got a set of cards that can just copy creatures in the form of a token. So these can also get out of hand because now we can make a copy of a creature and then copy the copy with our ability on Girad. So we can uh, quickly amass a lethal army of creatures. And then uh, we've got some token doubling and even tripling effects now with the deepest foundation, which will also get out of hand. And then our miscellaneous section includes other synergies with a token deck, such as Cathar's Crusade, Halo Fountain to untap our commander, and some of our other creatures can also be quite synergistic. And then we've got some interaction as well with Source to Plowshares and then some artifact and enchantment removal. So that's kind of the rough breakdown. So now for the deep dive, starting with our mana acceleration, there's our Boreal Grazer to put an extra land in play. Could also play the Kami if you want to play alchemy cards. Avaza Spilgrim is perfect since it can actually cast Girad even with just basic lands as opposed to needing dual lands with cards like Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves since otherwise we might have too much green and not enough white or red. And then of course Halfling's excellent too, making our legendary creatures uncountable and fixing our mana for those. And then a Gilded Goose is also fine, can still play a turn to Girat. Late game we can maybe copy the food token, and then even if it doesn't make mana it can still tap for Girat's ability to copy other tokens. And then we've got some treasure makers here with Charming Scoundrel. The Generous Plunderer is actually one of the better ones, since if we play it turn 2, turn 3 it will make a treasure that we can then immediately start copying with both the Plunderer and Girad, as opposed to cards that make a token when they enter the battlefield, which then we won't be able to copy on the following turn, since uh, they need to have entered the battlefield this turn with Girad in order to copy them. And then we've got uh, Magda, which is also excellent once we can actually start tapping it to copy other tokens, so we don't have to attack with it necessarily to still make a treasure whenever it becomes tapped. And if we make enough treasures, we can also maybe tutor up one of our powerful artifacts. No dragons in this list, even though you could play Terror of the Peaks, which is incredibly synergistic with this category of cards that can make copies of creatures, because now we could copy the Terror of the Peaks token, and the more we have, the more damage we get to deal, and maybe one hit KO the opponent. Then there's Cryptolitharite, so we can turn all our creatures into mana creatures. We've got Explore to play an extra land. Galagreeters can also keep making treasures. We've got the Prosperous Innkeeper immediately making a treasure when it enters and gaining more life. Arcane Signet is always worth the running. And then we've got Tireless Provisioner making more treasures with a landfall or potentially food tokens in the late game. And then Roxanne making a meteorite token can help us ramp while also dealing damage. So this can also be backbreaking if we can copy it a few times. Then we get to our other token makers, where Novice Inspector and Thraben Inspector make a clue. We've got to Outcast. If we have enough lands in play, it can start making 5-5 five, five dragon tokens in our upkeep. So those are also fun to copy. And then, of course, in the meantime, the Outcast can still help copy other tokens. So even though it's only a 1-1, one, one, it can still have a lot of utility in this deck, which is why we also have cards like Esper Sentinel and Soul Warden in the miscellaneous section, since these are just fine to play early, and then they provide a bit of an effect, even if they don't get to attack and block. But then they can still tap to activate Girat's ability while gaining a life and taxing the opponent or maybe drawing some cards. 
Then a Ragavan is also fine if it doesn't get to attack, since we can still tap it to activate Girit's ability. But if we can play it early, we can maybe connect a few times and make some treasure. We've got Voldaren Epicure making a blood token. Ovia can start by making servos, but then can uh, upgrade into large construct tokens, which can also scale the more creatures we have on the battlefield. The Angelic Ascension's fun, as we can target our own stuff to make a 4-4 Angel token and copy it, but can also be used as removal in a pinch. Then Imara, whenever it becomes tapped, makes a soldier, so similar to Magda, if we can tap it to copy other tokens, we don't have to attack with it and put it in harm's way to still generate some extra tokens for us. Then there's a Voice of Resurgence, which can punish the opponent for casting spells in our turn, and then when it dies, still leaves behind a large elemental token, which grows with the number of creatures we control, so that one's also fun to copy. Then Blade Splicer gives all our golems first strike and makes a 3-3 golem when it enters. We've got the Matter Weaver. Whenever we cast a creature spell, we can either make a 1-1 token or create a token that's a copy of target artifact token we control, so it can also be very nice if we can maybe copy a golem token, for instance. Evangelist makes a bat token when it enters or dies and has battle cry to pump the team when we attack. The forge keeps making larger and larger tokens with trample and haste. We've got the salvager which can make a 3-3 golem as well when it enters and we can activate it to give all our tokens a plus one plus one counter and trample until end of turn. Then there's a sentinel to make map tokens when it enters or attacks and tireless tracker similar to the tireless provisioner making clue tokens with landfall instead of treasures or food. And then at 4 mana there's a Master Splicer, kind of an upgraded version of Blade Splicer, as it can give our golems plus one plus one. We've got Isika's Chariot making a pair of cat tokens, and then the Chariot can be crewed to attack and maybe copy a token. So that's another way to enable Girad if we're out of other token makers in hand. And then the Frontier Mentor is probably one of the most synergistic creatures in this deck, makes a mercenary token when it enters, and then now whenever we activate an ability that targets a creature or player, copy that ability and we may choose new targets for the copy. So this will synergize with the mercenary's ability, but of course even better with Giret's ability, whether we use Giret itself or some other creature, we can now copy a creature token we target an additional time, so that can get out of hand very quickly. The processor is pretty cute, can sometimes be a little slow to get going and risky if the opponent can destroy it right away if we paid a bunch of life, but otherwise we can start making some very large Phyrexian minion tokens turn after turn. Then the wingmate rock needs to have a raid enabled to make a 3-4 bird token, but can then also gain us some life when it attacks. Renan 7 can make a large tree folk token that grows with the number of lands we control. Gruff triplets also pretty fun since the more tokens we have the better, as they'll now grow all the other triplets we have left on the battlefield when they die. Nexus of Becoming can put our creatures into play in the form of 3-3 tokens, which can then also maybe be copied, and then uh, can also maybe put some artifacts in play. And then Emiria's Call can be a land or can make a pair of 4-4 angel tokens. And then Titan of Industry can make a 4-4 rhino warrior token among other things. And then our copy effects include Molten Duplication, a 2-mana sorcery, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, once we get Reflection of Kiki Jiki, can start copying our non-legendary creatures, but in the meantime the Shaman also has excellent synergy, making treasure tokens when it attacks. Then we've got Seance, bringing back creatures out of our graveyard in the form of uh, copies that will have to be exiled at the beginning of the next end step, but in the meantime we can maybe copy them with Girad's ability. Then the Troublemaker can also copy our creatures if we discard a card, can also blitz it if we want to activate it right away. And then there's Calamity, which is a little bit more expensive, but can maybe repeatedly start copying our creatures as well. And then our doubling effects include Anointed Procession and Parallel Lives, 4 mana enchantments with the same effect, Mondrak, a 4-4 creature that can also be made indestructible, and then the Deepest Foundation triples only our creature tokens, but then when it dies turns into a land that we can flip back into the god. And then our miscellaneous section, as we mentioned, has Sentinel and Soul Warden, Swords as a bit of removal, Got Halo Fountain, excellent to untap our creatures, we'll often be able to untap at least two, and then could also be a win condition with enough creatures on the battlefield. And then there's a Loran, which can blow up artifacts and enchantments, similar to Knight of Autumn. And then a Wily Duke, also excellent if we can tap it, as whenever it becomes tapped we gain a life and draw a card. And finally Cathar's Crusade, an excellent way to close out the game once we start making enough creature tokens. And then the mana base now also gets to play with the remaining fetch lands. So we've got a ton of fetch lands now available in Brawl, making these multicolor mana bases pretty trivial to support. And then I'm pretty happy with all the surveil lands as well, in addition to the shock lands. So we can now fetch up a commercial district, for instance, alongside stomping ground. And if we don't need the land to be untapped, we can surveil one instead, giving us a bit more card selection. 
but of course we still have the shock lanes which can just pay some life to have them enter untapped and then not too many utility lanes just a castle garenbrig which can maybe ramp out some of our green creatures ahead of schedule and then the channel lanes offering a bit more interaction as well so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw facing kodama so we can expect some cheap modified creatures yeah, this is not the best hand to face a Kodama deck since we don't have the best blockers. Yeah, turn to Magda, I guess won't have a great attack into a 3-3. So maybe I should mulligan for something else. Yeah, if we weren't up against Kodama, I would have probably kept. But since we know what we're up against, I might as well look for something a bit better in the matchup. This hand sort of counts. At least Voice is a decent blocker, Innkeeper can ramp. And then try to save the fetch lane for Provisioner. And it's going to be a Contaminator first. So they don't have a modified creature yet, at least. So play Innkeeper. And then maybe next turn I can uh, play Provisioner and a fetch lane to make two treasure. Processor could be fun with our deepest foundation tripling our creature tokens. Run on seven also. Serpon might have some plus one counters they want to proliferate with the contaminator. Or I guess the counters on Bankbuster also work. Take five. And then Bankbuster's excellent with Kodama since they can crew it. And then it's a four four creature that's modified, so it will trample and get them additional basics. So is there anything I can do to stop that? Not really. So I think we're still looking at Provisioner into Fetch Land. And then try to ramp out something large next turn. Could still play Soul Warden by fetching like a red-white dual land. Voice of Resurgence is an option too, but I'll save my treasure. And then, since I'm not blocking, may as well attack with the Innkeeper. Alright, so if I play Gearhead next turn, hopefully we draw land to trigger Provisioner as well. So I can start copying my treasures. Battle Glyph takes out Provisioner, sadly. And then they can still crew and attack. Serpon's ramping. And we're down to 12. So it's not looking great for us. We drew the land, but now we don't have a provisioner. So what are my options? I can play... A Voice of Resurgence alongside Giret, and then if this jumps, I can start copying the token. I guess that's decent. Even though all of the opponent's creatures trample, we'll be left with some pretty large elemental tokens. Scout is fine. Seize Ozolith, that's pretty synergistic as well here. Do they keep it? They do. Could draw into it with a Bank Buster. Which they do. Alright, if their turn is just playing Ozolith, it's not too bad. Even though the Contaminator could still proliferate. Can still make the play we want it. And these elementals should be able to compete with the opponent's creatures pretty soon. I 
Okay, 7-7. Seven, seven. They'll only get bigger, hopefully. Master Splicer isn't bad, or we can run on 7, make a Tree Folk, although it's actually only a 4-4. Four, four. So I might be better off with a Master Splicer then. And save my treasure. And then are we actually attacking for lethal here? I guess uh, we might be. Can copy the token to grow the elementals, or can attack all out. Put on chumps one, three times nine is uh, 27, so yeah, just attacking all out would do it. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Riku of Many Paths. So the battle of the three mana legends from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Our hands a little lackluster, two lands only. Probably not gonna get there. This one would have been nice if we had a red mana for Ragavan, but we do not. Alright, this is our best hand so far. Turn on Pilgrim, turn to Gearhead. And then turn four I can attack to enable Raid on Wingmate and maybe copy the token once. Either get rid of Emiria's Call or Calamity. I guess we're pretty far from casting Calamity. Chariot's not bad either. Bonin Cycles, Lorien Revealed. So we can expect to see a lot of modal cards, which tend to be removal spells for the most part. Alright, so Giret may not resolve if I try and cast it here. Could go for Arcane Signet instead. Play a tap to Miria's Call. I think I still give our commander a try, and then next turn we'll still have a decent follow up with Asika's Chariot. Right, put in just with a Growth Spiral. So we can attack for three, and hopefully next turn copy some tokens. Can be a return from the wilds to ramp. So, yeah, opponent setting up some big plays. We can play chariots, copy a cat, and that sets up our wingmate rock pretty nicely, as we can use our tokens to attack and enable raid, whereas our non tokens can then make more birds. That resolves. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, I guess Chariot can be crude, but it still doesn't have haste, so it wouldn't be able to copy a cat. So I'll just do this now. And pass it back. Our opponent does have a lot of mana. And a Shark Typhoon hard cast. Alright, so they're gonna try to make some large tokens. But at least for this turn, we're safe. Possible they're just sandbagging a board wipe that they're gonna fire off next turn. Which is maybe reason not to commit the wingmate rock. Although it is certainly tempting. So, if we just want to maximize our tokens, I guess I would attack with a cat, enable raid, play a wingmate rock, crew chariot, and then chariot can also use Giret's ability to make two more tokens. Yeah, that doesn't sound bad. Even though I guess chariots could also just attack to make an extra cat, but wouldn't be able to make an extra bird. Yeah, I'll try that out. And then hope they don't have a board wipe. Yeah, 
Okay, your turn. They didn't trump with the token, so maybe that implies that there's no board wipe coming, or a one-sided board wipe along the lines of River's Rebuke it would be incredibly painful. Opponent passes back. They do have seven mana for an overloaded Cyclonic Rift, I guess. So let's assume they have it in hand. So what's the best course of action? I guess I wouldn't want to tap my mana pre-combat. So instead go to attackers. Probably fine to crew a Seeker's Chariot still. And attack. Can keep Girad and Pilgrim to maybe make more birds. Since a chariot can copy one. And then we might see an ambush from a shark token. Alright, opponent with an Electro Dominance for four, taking out Girad. So now I'm kind of regretting not waiting until they maybe use it so I could have crewed chariots with Girad. But uh, yeah, that happens. There's no token I can copy right now. Opponent gets a 6-6 six, six shark. And they get to cast another spell, Supreme Will. Looking at the top four, so they would have had a counter spell at the ready here. Make another shark. So yeah, I think I still attack all out. Chariot copies a bird and we'll get some good damage in. Can maybe not attack with the cat token since I get to kind of block it for free with the 3-3. Three, three. Unblocking the wingmate over the chariot. Or maybe setting up a double block. Alright, that's fine. So maybe the cat could have snuck in an attack. Points at 8. And then our follow up Signets into Fable. Can still play Thraben Inspector. And I'm questioning whether I should play Mirios Call as a land or not, or if we maybe discard it to the Fable. Can still play a 5 mana Girad next turn regardless. So maybe keep this to discard and draw. Shark attacks, that's not a good sign. Heavily implies a board wipe. I mean, probably fine to take 6 on the off chance that this is a bluff and they want us to trump. Because if it was a damage-based sweeper, they would have just cast it and then attacked. Meditation. So bounce everything. Yeah, that's painful. Maybe regretting not playing the land now. But uh, let's see. Can go Tireless Tracker, play a land, play Signet, play Pilgrim. That's not bad. So we still get a clue token out of it. And then they'll have to replay the Shark Typhoon. At this point they might prefer cycling it, but nope, still hard cast. Can they remove Tireless Tracker? Not yet. So we've got a few options. Can't quite play Girad and Fable in the same turn. So maybe we just sack a clue. Play Fable, take it from there. If they have another counter spell, I might be better off attacking first. It's gonna be a Verdant command to make a bunch of tokens. And gain life, that's fine. If they block, we can just sack a clue to grow the tracker. And I guess we might still use the Pilgrim here. And a Boseju, an answer to Shark Typhoon. Okay, that's probably worth channeling. So, can play Fable and still do that. So, our opponent's gonna be at 11 with a lot of mana. 
but uh, behind on board. So yeah, could still be an interesting battle. Finally time for their commander, which can uh, do some fun things. And now our King Bombardment, another powerful enchantment. I think I just ditched uh, one drops anyway. Right, and the Misty is pretty powerful with Tireless Tracker and Titan of Industry actually perfect here. As it can blow up the Arcane Bombardment before it does more damage. So I'll just go for it now. Can maybe attack first with a Tracker. Fine to trade for their commander at this point. Opponent jumps. And not gonna take any chances. Probably could have afforded to get a surveil land instead of a basic, since we have a mana going to waste here. Opponent with a land of the top, so they're in trouble. And then now a land, make a clue. Could use Girat to make a whole bunch of extra clues, but uh, probably better off attacking all out. And then I can still sack two clue tokens to grow a tireless tracker. Bone's gonna scry. But it's probably too late now. Alright, so we had some interesting back and forth, making lots of tokens, getting our board swept, but then still recovering and dealing with our enchantments. And that's 7, 8, 9, 10. And yeah, we have lethal here, but may as well save the tracker. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, blue-green, a ramp. And we don't have any mana acceleration. Do have lots of token makers. So how do we feel about it? Turn 1, Inspector. Turn 2, Voice. Turn 3, Gearhead. But don't really accomplish anything. Yeah, I think we can do better. This is a little bit better. Do need more mana, but uh, explore into some powerful effects here. And then we can surveil into a land, hopefully. Gilded Goose, not quite as good. Okay. So I can explore and then fetch another surveil land, perhaps. And uh, could make it parlor. Do we want a rootbound crag? We'll enter untapped with my parlor and mountain, so sure. Okay, so if I play Girad, it's just attacking for three right now. Next turn we can maybe copy the token from the mentor. Not as mana efficient as mentor now and the next turn voice plus Girad. But then I won't have any tokens to copy with the ability. So I think I'm still better off just playing Girad right now. Now these are all legendary. Calamity only copies non-legendary creatures. But could be pretty nice alongside voice. Put on to ramping with migration path in the meantime. I still need a second white source for Cathar's Crusade as well. So, Mentor. Copy the token. And copy again. So yeah, this is a pretty decent engine if we had a Cathar's Crusade on the battlefield. But that will have to wait. And time for Emoti. Cascading into Hedron Archive, that's one of the better hits. So they can still maybe cast something else. A Somberwald Sage. And a Utopia Sprawl. So next turn they have a ton of mana. And we could be in trouble. Innkeepers, not a bad draw. So, what's our plan? 
could play Innkeeper, which then unlocks Cathar's Crusade, but I wouldn't be able to copy a creature. I could play Calamity and start making additional mercenary tokens. I really want to combine Voice with Calamity, but that requires a bit more mana. So maybe it is just Innkeeper, copy the treasure. Play Crusade. And then we can play Voice. Triggering Crusade. And then let's read this carefully. Yeah, I guess activating these would copy the ability. But uh, yeah, I guess we'll just attack all out. That's fine. And then next turn with Calamity, we can hopefully do something fun. Vorinclex, pretty good, but could have been worse. But there might be a follow-up. Engineer, so looks like they have a lot of mana, but maybe no payoff. Other than next turn, they could activate Vorinclex. But yeah, for now we seem to be safe. And uh, yeah, we can play Calamity. Trigger Crusade. Can saddle using probably Voice of Resurgence, because then the token will die and trigger. And then I guess I can use a Mercenary to pump Calamity, so I can at least trade for Vorinclex. Attack. And these should be able to attack as well. Get two voice tokens. Crusade triggers a bunch. And we can use our other untapped creatures here to make even more voice tokens. Yeah, we're having fun. And then this triggers once again. When the triggers are getting this loud, you know you're doing something right. Potentially could have attacked with a few more creatures instead. But I'm not complaining. Alright, damage happens, and our opponent sadly dies, so we don't get to see the voice die end of turn and create an elemental token, which also would have been fun. But yeah, that'll do it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and how is our hand looking? Portico, turn 2 Signet plus Inspector, turn 3 maybe play Gearhead, and then Sentinel, Wingmates, Mondrag, decent follow-ups. Yeah, it's going to be a tough battle here against a Sacrifice deck, but we've got a functional hand. And then Portico wouldn't mind finding an extra land, so I'll keep the Verdant. Could have not played Thrayman Inspector, so next turn I could play Giret Inspector and then copy the clue. But maybe some better opportunity will come along. So now... Could also look into Mondrak. Even though I can't quite make it indestructible in response to removal yet. Could play Sentinel actually, since then next turn I can attack and start copying the map token. Yeah, that feels good. And then... Just get a forest. And I can go exploring. Maybe on Inspector to diversify. Knight of Autumn. Probably not what I need right now. I 
Ah, Maelstrom Pulse is too bad. Sentinel down. And then now I might be on attack with Inspector, enable Wingmate Rock. Or we could wait on that play and first play Gearhead. Which for now would just be attacking and still sack the clue. And then next turn can attack and make an extra Wingmate, a Rock token or two. Which would be a pretty big deal. Although they're still not necessarily bigger than Korvold. Could also play Mondrak. And then I guess uh, just keep up the ability to maybe make it indestructible. Yeah, I guess Mondrak is good too. And then can play a fetch here to get a surveil land. But if we need to make indestructible, we can. And then finding a cheap token maker to play alongside Giret might be ideal. That point is going to try to bedevil, so we'll make Mondrank indestructible. And probably let go of Thraben Inspector over Signet. That's actually a close one. Yeah, let's actually keep the Inspector. It'll be good once we get our Gearhead on the battlefield. And can maybe protect Mondrak from a sacrifice effect. Okay, so for now just attack with Gearhead, play Pilgrim. And then next turn we can hopefully make a bunch of Wingmate Rock tokens. So it's a lot of setup here. Hopefully the payoff will be worth it. So I just need to attack with one creature to enable raid and then the rest can start copying tokens. So plunder, pretty scary. Part of a lot of infinite combos, but should be fine now. So we get to untap and uh, I guess we'll attack with the indestructible Mondrak. A raid has been enabled. And just hope our opponent doesn't have a board wipe now. Alright, not bad. 8, 3, 4 tokens. So Maelstrom Pulse actually would have been the perfect answer since it can take out multiple cards with the same name. But they've already used it. So we'll see what our opponent can come up with. Diabolic Intent. Alright, this is probably a board wipe. Well, hopefully Mondrax is still left. If it's a languish, we lose everything. Spiteful banditry, yeah, that's a good one. So our opponent still gets a treasure. Well, we can still play Girad here, attack all out, and hopefully that's enough. They might be keeping up a removal spell. Orcish Bowmaster. Well, it's the nerfed version, so it doesn't make an extra token. So our opponent has to jump. Falls to two. Yeah, I guess Meat Hook Massacre would have been quite a bit better for them, but that's also nerfed in Historic and therefore Brawl. Otherwise, they might have been able to gain a ton of life. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gix, so Mono Black, probably gonna see some cheap evasive creatures and some removal. This hand's a little awkward. We can play Halfling on one, turn two, 
maybe start with a matter weaver. But uh, yeah, if they can remove the halfling, we're potentially in trouble. Pretty far from casting a seance. I'll take a mulligan. This hand's probably worse. No green mana, no ramp. This I can keep. And then uh, just gonna play a tapped temple garden. And yep, one mana flyer. Explore. Can surveil. And then next turn provisioner plus vista. Can make two treasure. And they have a saboteur to put into play here. Okay. 2-2 two, two death touch, so I'm not necessarily going to want to trade for my provisioner, which means they could draw two cards with Gix next turn. And then get a red source, a red green is fine. Mystic. I could still play alongside provisioner, but I think I'm maybe looking for more of a payoff card. Although I guess, yeah, being able to play it alongside Provisioner has its upside. And I don't need to waste any treasure. And then it's a cheap creature to combo with Girad, so maybe it's fine. And then I could be convinced to just trade Provisioner for Saboteur if they play Gix. And then next turn I could go Gearhead, plus Blade Splicer, and then copy the token twice. It's gonna be a Virus Beetle, discard Loran. Even though it can destroy the Beetle, it's not all that relevant. And then, sure, we'll just take it then. Opponent gets another Virus Beetle. And a Pilfering Imp, another flyer. Alright, so... I'm probably gonna lose Mondrak to another Virus Beetle now. But so it goes. So play a Splicer and Gearhead. And then at least we'll have a nice board presence. Probably would have been worth it to... just uh, use a treasure instead of tapping the Mystic to make an extra Golem. Although, then again, the extra mana could come in handy later. So it's not a clear-cut decision. So if they play Gix, they can draw two cards pretty easily. But we're gonna make sure to empty my hand first. I'll land off the top. So we don't have much going on, other than I guess I can make some food tokens now to gain more life. And then the golems, at least a few of them, can attack. I'll attack with two. And that's a chum block, because of first strike. And then we'll uh, copy some food while we can. And then let's see. Maybe just pass so I can sack three food tokens instead of making another one. And then I can also trade Mystic for a Virus Beetle so they don't get to draw an extra card. Ah, they're just gonna send in the flyers. So yeah, opponent's gonna pull ahead on cards here. But hopefully these golems can still do some work. And if we top deck a token maker, we could still be alright.
Suppose I could have left Geared on defense to block Ginger Brute, but her opponent didn't run it out. Okay, so back to 22. And the Miria's Call, a pretty nice top deck. And we have just enough mana to cast it here. So yeah, keeping the treasure token paid off in the end. Although I suppose we could have made more treasure with a Provisioner instead of food. So if that resolves, Girat can help make more Angels, but they did have the Infernal Grasp, sadly. Back to the Command Zone. Still get to set up a decent attack here. Opponent's at 11. We now have some flying blockers for these 1-1s. One and our opponent's going for it. So may as well block the Ginger Brute so we don't trade with a Swarm if they give it Death Touch. Opponent could draw one card, fall to 10. And do they have a board wipe? If it's minus X minus X, it could get around indestructible. Opponent activating Gix's ability, don't see that every day. So yeah, we'll see what they can uh, come up with here. Exile top X cards, play lands and cast spells without paying their mana costs. So they're just hoping for some payoffs. And yeah, they did find some stuff, but no flying blockers for the angels. So they're still in trouble here. And Salvager's not bad, although I guess I can't activate it to pump my tokens right away. So I might still be better off with the gear red and then attack all out. But yeah, opponent scoops it up since they're taking at least eight in the air. So it shouldn't be too difficult to cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Marchesa, Grixis, Crimes. Probably not a great matchup since our deck revolves around a lot of synergies and our opponent can break those up pretty easily. That being said, our hand's decent with a lot of individually powerful threats. Now I want to make sure to get either mountain or forest for rootbound purposes, but I also need white mana. And I cannot get white or red here, so I guess Jetmere's Garden it is. And then we can play a Generous Plunder for starters. Pretty good with Giret, since next turn I could immediately make two additional treasures, but we'll see if it survives. Could also play a Parallel Lives first. Alright, opponent's just gonna take it out. So now Fable is likely the play. Pretty far from casting a Titan, so we can discard it next turn. And a Thought Seize will have a look. At least they don't get to draw extra cards since their commander's not in play yet. Takes Mondrak. Found a land. I think we just ditch Titan of Industry, keep the rest. And then a Wily Duke's pretty nice too, especially if I already have a Giret on the battlefield. Could just play Parallel Lives, if it resolves I get to copy the treasure token. If they have a counterspell we're gonna be a little sad, but uh, yeah, I'll give it a shot. An offer you can't refuse at least gives us some treasure in return. And could play a Wily Duke right now, so next turn I can tap it. If we find a cheap token maker, I guess the treasure from the Shaman could do. Opponent still missing red mana for Marchesa. And it's gonna be a Snapcaster plus go for the throat most likely. Take out Wily Duke. Okay, so we don't get to do much card drawing here. 
and Gilded Goose to draw. So, yeah, I guess for now, Goose plus Girad. And then I can copy the treasure token as opposed to attack for three. Yeah, that could be more relevant. And then next turn we'll have a bunch of creatures to combo off with the Evangelist. Reflection's also pretty nice since we can make a token of Evangelist and then copy the token as opposed to the bat. Sanctuary put back a removal spell once again, or Thoughtseize. They could draw into it and cast it right away. Possible they have some red removal spells in hand that they aren't able to cast yet. But so far their blue-black control deck's been working out fine. Our opponents either deep in thought or they have disconnected. Alright, time to play Evangelist, I guess, and hope it resolves. It does. Activate Reflection. Definitely the greedy play as opposed to just copying the bats, but let's live a little bit. And make another one. And attack all out. Triple battle cry. Get in for 12. And next turn could be fun. So as you'll notice, we only had to sacrifice the token we got from Reflection of Kiki Jiki, since having to sacrifice end of turn is separate from the token itself. So these are fine, but actually still had haste. So goes to show how important the templating of cards can be in situations like these. Opponent drew Thoughtseize, so they could take Loron, but that's not going to save them. They need a board wipe. All right, it's our turn. And the Wingmate Rock could be fun, but it's probably going to be too late since we can attack with everyone. Probably could have gone through the motions with Reflection of Kiki Jiki again. But this is also pretty satisfying. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Green God. And uh, yeah, our hand's decent. Probably looking at turn 2 plunder, turn 3 Gearhead. Now I could play Goose on 1 and uh, maybe just get a forest for now. Yeah, I think forest is fine. We can just get basics for the first couple turns. Save ourselves a bit of damage. Shaper Sanctuary, good protection in case of removal, but our deck plays very little and uh, yeah, can play Plunder plus maybe Halfling just to have an extra creature to start copying the treasure next turn. So the plan is to just uh, play Gearhead and then can copy the treasure three times. Still maybe play a Fable. Although I might prefer to actually copy the Fable and have more untapped creatures available. Alright, Angelic Ascension is also pretty nice. Can use it on ourselves to copy a 4-4. But uh, step one is to play Gearhead. And then make a treasure. So now I could Angelic Ascension the Goose and then copy the Angel with my other effects. Definitely an interesting uh, thought here. Yeah, maybe that's the play. Sure. And make some angels. Yeah, this deck has some cool lines of play. Now, 
this luckily doesn't have reach, so we won't be able to block our angels. But we'll see what else they can come up with. Vorinclax, that one does have reach. Probably still worth it to activate the plunder, even though I'll likely end up copying the uh, Goblin Shaman token from Fable. But yeah, opponent throws in the towel already. So yeah, I think this turn make a treasure, can uh, attack with a plunder maybe, and then use Halfling and Giret to copy the Shaman. Whereas we can probably still get in with the Angels for 12. So then 12, 13, 14, 15. Points at 10, and then next turn we should be able to cross the finish line. Alright, so we get to see our Naya tokens in action here. And yeah, Giret's a very unusual build around, and uh, striking a right balance between having non-tokens as well as enough token makers to leverage the ability can be a little tricky. Playing the deck is also not super straightforward since there's a lot of lines of play available, but if everything comes together, hopefully I get to showcase what the deck is capable of. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.